Death Valley. At first glance, this looks like a horrible place to build a home. I mean, the name alone should scare off any developer, and just think, getting building supplies to a place so dry, so dusty, and so unbearably hot seems like a complete waste of money. But not only did someone build a home in Death Valley, they built an entire castle. Not many people can say that they've bought land from the National Park Service. It is pretty rare. This is Scotty's Castle, located on top of the biggest lie ever told in Death Valley National Park. To put it in a nutshell, he's a con man. The blunt description that park management assistant Abby Wines is describing is that of this man, Walter Scott, AKA Death Valley Scotty. He had been a entertainer in Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show. After learning the art of fictional storytelling in Wild West shows in the 1890s, Scotty decided to tell the biggest fictional story of his life. So he claimed to have a gold mine. Scotty thought if he was going to create a fake gold mine, why not have it in a scary sounding place like Death Valley? It worked. Scotty made tons of money off conning wealthy businessmen, but the con came to an immediate end when one of the investors, a Mr. Albert Johnson, decided to check up on Scotty's mine. He called the bluff. That was a big problem for Scotty. And so what Scotty did was he staged an ambush. Long story short, the fake ambush outside the fake gold mine ended in failure. Scotty's brother ended up with a bullet in his leg, and everyone involved had to come clean. But instead of calling the authorities, Mr. Johnson did this. Instead, Albert Johnson kept sending money to Scotty. Albert Johnson had such an exciting time in Death Valley that the wealthy insurance company owner returned year after year to visit Scotty, paying him a healthy sum just to keep the gold mine facade alive. It took them nine years to build everything that's here, 1922 to 1931. Eventually, Mr. Johnson's wife talked him into buying land and building this castle. The $2 million Spanish Mediterranean design had more than a dozen rooms, a terracotta courtyard, and a clock tower with chimes. And so every 15 minutes, it would play music. Being the storyteller he was, Scotty told visitors he built the castle, and it was with profits from the mine. And Albert Johnson would play along, and if someone asked him who he was, he would say, oh, I'm just Scotty's banker. News of the famed castle caught the attention of countless journalists. Scotty's story spread across the nation, and then in 1931, it caught the attention of the federal government. Turns out a few years later, he found out that this land was government land. Turns out early survey markers plotted by the U.S. government were wrong. When corrected, Mr. Johnson's land was inside Death Valley National Park, and it took him years of litigation to correct. And the president passed a law that said that only two men could buy this land from the National Park Service. Those two men were Scotty and Mr. Johnson. In the end, the new land deed went to Mr. Johnson, but Scotty lived in the castle until the day he died in 1954. Scotty wanted to be buried on that hill where he could overlook his castle. In 1970, the castle was sold back to the National Park Service, and for decades, tourists were allowed to tour the castle. But then in 2015, a flash flood damaged much of the property. The water built up and rocks built up enough pressure it broke through this wall. Restoration efforts are nearing completion, and now the National Park is offering limited tours. Space is very limited. You'll need to reserve in advance. Former investors did take Scotty to court for his scams, but nothing came of it. Partly because Mr. Johnson, who was a victim himself, defended Scotty. And under oath, his answer was, Walter Scott has repaid me every dime in laughter. And thanks to Mr. Johnson, the legend of Scotty's castle lives on. From the fake gold mine in Death Valley, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back road.